Hi, this is Mike. Welcome back to the Moodle programming series. The goal of this series is to develop a custom Moodle block. In this session, we will show you how to add content to the block, and we'll, we will also make some modifications to the language pack, the English language pack strings. In our last session, on our first session on creating the basic block, we identified the four files that were necessary in order for the for Moodle to install install the, the, the plugin. And those were access PHP, the language file, block underscore mic underscore basic PHP, and the class file and the version file. And what I've done is since we're finished with the basic block, I've, I've copied all of it over into a new directory and I've named it Hello World. I haven't installed this block, so let's go ahead and go to Moodle, log in, and let's see if, if it actually recognizes the new block. Okay, there's our hello world block and to be installed. So let's go ahead and upgrade our database. Success. Click on continue. And very good. That looks like we've installed it successfully. So let's turn on front page editing and let's add the block hello world very good now one thing on the on the permission or the the language strings this, this language string plugin name is required and where it is actually displayed is under site administration it is actually the string that gets displayed in this on this page right there hello world and we have one one instance of it there's no settings global settings we'll get to we'll get to that at some point let's just get right to adding the content initially and let's go to the development site Moodle's development site and let's click on the plugin development blocks page there's a lot of really good information on this on this page and we'll just copy we're just going to copy and paste this little section here the get content function and we will simply go to our back to NetBeans and go to our block class and we will add that function to our code. We got an extra curly bracket there. Okay, now this this function is a part of is a part of this block base and all of the functions that you can use in your block are can be found there's a reference here so the experienced developers or for those who want a programmer's reference text should revert to this appendix to, to appendix a 
So here it gives us all of the functions that are inherited from the block base. And it, it tells you, let's hide this. There are three sets of, of functions. There's are those that you want, you may use and, and override in your block. Those that you may not override, but may want to use. And those internal methods that you should never, never use or should never be overridden. And the, in addition to the, in addition to the methods, it also towards the bottom, it'll also go down into the class variables that are also part of the block underscore base. And we'll touch on a few of those. Now let's this go over this code real simply. This first if statement simply checks to see if this content is if the property content of this class is null or not. If it's null, then we know that the content has not been processed yet. So this is, according to the documentation, this is just a, a way to, pre to prevent a performance hit on, on Moodle so that every time the, the, a block is hit, that the content doesn't have to be regenerated that's what that little first if statement is. If the content has, hasn't has been created, then the requirement is, is that a new standard class be created, be instantiated, and then with the, with the, the default content type, which is text, and I'll show you where that's at in just a second, there's two fields that are required text and footer. There's two other content types. And again, we can find that on this page. Yeah, let's just search for it. Here we go. This variable holds all the actual content that is displayed inside each block. Valid values for it are either null or an object of standard class, which must be specified, which must have specific member variables as explained below. If the context type is block type text, then these two variables are member variables are required text and, and footer. And that's exactly what we have here. The other two context or block type is list. And so if we have, so we can set the content, we can set which type of content type it is. And if it's block type list, then there's three variables and it explains which each one of these variables are. And the same thing with the block type tree. And it all depends on what kind of content you're going to be displaying, but it's, you know, it's, it's a nice way of doing that. And in terms of the block tree, it's just, just the one item that is, that is needed. Now we can, let's just go ahead and just modify this a little bit here. We'll just say the content of our hello world block footer here we'll say footer and let's just place that in a simple HTML tag see what happens now save that before we install it though let's take a look at couple a couple other things when we 
first installed Actually, well, actually, you can see Moodle didn't install it. And even though I didn't change the version, you can see here that the content that we added was placed. And I guess that, that really does make some sense that that would be the case. That because of content, if you need to, if you needed to have a new version every time the content changed, especially if you had dynamic content, that might be a little problematic. So that makes sense that the content would show, even though the version has not been updated. But what I wanted to show you was, let's go ahead and go to the, permissions. And here you can see, this says hello world, add instance, and it's in two square brackets. And the reason for that is, is because this string is not defined. So let's go ahead and define that string. And again, we'll just go ahead and go to the, we'll get from this example. Scroll down and find the strings. There they are. So let's just copy and paste these and put them in our language file. We will need to rename them. We'll hello world. And hello world. And let's change the name. Oop. And one more time. Okay, let's save these. Now let's go back to Moodle and let's, let's just see if, if those things actually got picked up without changing the version. And So it's not picking up the changes. Let's just check that one more time. Sign roles, permissions. So it's not picking up the new string, the strings that we added to the language pack. So in order to, to get Moodle to recognize that, we need to modify the version. And we'll just increment this by what? Well, this by one hour. Save it. Now let's go back to Moodle and let's hit the home page. So now it recognizes that there is a version a version change and this one needs to be upgraded. So we'll go ahead and hit upgrade Moodle database now. Success. And let's go to the home page where our block's installed. Okay. So let's check out those strings and see if we've succeeded in updating. Yeah, so it's, now you can see add a new Hello World, World block. In this session, we have modified or updated the version string we've added content and we've also made some modification or some additions to the language pack strings that's about it for this session I'm trying to make these as short as possible it's kind of hard to do but we'll see you next time thanks a lot
Bye.